Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it's not a perfect circle. Pretty much the first step was a lot of soldering. We had 35 buck converters, each of which had to be connected to two boards and a whole lot of wires connected to every single board. I think the most labor intensive part of building this laser was how much soldering we had to do. After setting each buck converter to output the correct voltage, we had to solder a lot. We had 35 of these buck converters. Every one of them had a positive and negative in and out each one connected to a positive and negative board, and every one of those boards had five different lasers attached to it. All 70 boards did get coated with some liquid electric tape to make sure they didn't bump into each other while they're inside the laser and cause a short. Look at me use a tool. The circular boards that we used were cut out of small rectangular pieces, and it took a bunch of them. This was a great opportunity for Grace to learn how to use the soldering iron, something that she had never done before. Every one of the lasers was going to be held in place in an acrylic disc. I printed off a pattern with the correct spacing of all of the holes to be drilled, and got to work. It took a long time to drill all 174 holes. The size of the drill that I'm using is actually one of the main reasons there's not a 175th laser in the very center. The disc was just barely too wide for me to reach the center with the drill bit from any angle. A little bit of cleanup on the disc sander made the edges smoother and made it fit better for the mounting hardware. The aluminum ring I'm using to hold the acrylic in place is actually hardware for a Lazy Susan table, and I used that because I had this fantasy of making the whole thing spin inside the housing. That ended up not working out, so we skipped that, but it still worked to hold everything in place. One by one, I used epoxy putty to affix the lasers in place. I had to do them one at a time because they weren't terribly well built, and I had to aim each one as I put it in place. With a matching target across the room, I aligned every single laser with its corresponding dot and held them in place with the epoxy putty. This was not a fast process. It took five or six minutes per laser. Keep track of how many times my shirt changes. Those are each different days of installing the lasers. Finally, all 174 lasers were mounted in the housing and it was time to give it a test. All right, we've got all 174 lasers wired up. Oh, uh, here goes. We got a little bit of smoke in the air, see how it looks. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it's not a perfect circle. Things have shifted as the glue dried and cured or whatever, but uh, boom. We've got like one, I don't, so I don't want to leave it on for too long because there's a lot of components that could start to overheat. Uh, for instance, all of the power is going from the battery into these like bus plates. So electricity is going into this and then it's going out to 35 different places where it's going into the buck converters, which is where the voltage gets lowered down. But there is just like a lot of energy going through these. And I think the buck converters are what will overheat first. They actually have a safety built in. So if they get too warm, they start turning themselves off and they pulse. Uh, these have no such safety measures. Um, and even the wires that I have right now, technically these wires right here are not rated for uh, all of the power we will have. But right now, since I'm only running off of one battery, eventually it's gonna be four, uh, but all wired so that it's the same amount of voltage going in, but it'll last longer. So uh, not a perfect circle, but they are all going at once. Oh, and that is my wires that I said weren't rated for this power. Apparently, even just with the one battery, I don't know enough about electricity, clearly. I actually have uh, some much, much more robust wire. This is rated up to 30 amps, as is like this wire, and technically I'm not sure if these are, but they should be dividing it all up, so I don't think we have that issue, but this wire that I was using, holy cow, just melted everything. So I'm gonna switch those out, take the battery off, but that was working. But it was by wire, yeah, as suspected. That wire was too weak. I'm gonna switch that out right now for some better wire, but it was working. And then, what was it, was it this one? I think that was pointed just 
off like three, four inches away from the rest of it. It works though, at least mostly. After attaching a few additional components that let me use four batteries at once instead of just one, it was time to put everything inside the housing, which was a concrete form from the hardware store. This was not the easiest task because I had to work inside the cardboard too. Fortunately, I've got pretty long arms. A couple of zip ties held a few components to the walls of the tube, but a lot of it is just wires hanging inside. Grace got to work with the Cricut vinyl cutter and made a really cool decal that went on the laser. I don't think I've ever used a laser pointer that didn't have some sort of sticker, warning, or description of what the laser was, so we wanted to make sure to have one on our giant laser as well. The whole thing ended up being pretty heavy, so I also added a shoulder strap just to make it easier to carry around. What? That this looks... room looks psycho! Oh, wow. Holy cow, the room is nuts! <laughs> it's so hot on my hand. <laughs>